Hi there, Johnny here from johnnylipsonstudios.co.uk and in today's video I am going to be looking at busing in Studio One version 3. Um, busing was probably the big selling point for me when I switched to Studio One two years ago. Um, mostly because when I saw it demonstrated it, I was just floored with how easy it is. I don't have to go connecting the dots, connecting one thing to another thing and drop down lists and having to scroll through all the billions of buses you might have and uh, you know on your interface or what have you. None of that. You, you don't have to do any of that in Studio One. All of that gets done by Studio One for you in an instant. It's very, very quick. It's very, very easy. So I'm going to show you uh, the main way in which I do busing in Studio One. Because as you may have seen in a previous video, which I called my approach to a mix, um, I am an advocate and a practitioner of what I call and other people call backwards mixing or top down mixing, which basically means when I start mixing, I start here on my master fader or main out as it's called here. And I start with EQ and compression or whatever. And then I move to this section here, which at the moment is empty. And normally this section here would, would contain a whole bunch of buses, um, much like this. Here are all my tracks and channels. And here are all my buses. So I tend to start over here, as I say, with compression on my master fader and then I process my buses. I route everything, all of my individual tracks to buses here. So I have a lead vocal one, a background vocal, horns, keys, whatever I need for a particular mix. Um, I have them all bussed together. All my buses are red so that I can distinguish them from everything else. And this is where the bulk of my mix gets done probably 85-90% of my mix gets done right here. And then I move across to the individual channels uh, and I will do, as you can see, there's not a whole lot going on here. Hardly any inserts. Just a few dotted around here and there where I felt that they were absolutely necessary. Um, but for the most part, this is where my mix is done. So I'm going to show you how to set up these buses in Studio One using this little mock-up that I've made using the loops in Studio One. So we have drums, we have an upright bass, we have a Fender Rhodes and we have some horns. And I'm going to show you how I can bus these together uh, or I can bus them separately for bus mixing like I would normally do. So this is how I'd normally go about it. Let me play a little bit of the track first so you get an idea of what I'm doing. So there you go, nice and cool and hip and 1960s cool jazz, which I just love. But anyway, so how do I bus? This is the simplest and easiest way to bus. First thing I do is I select the first track. Let's say I want to just like create one main bus for all of these tracks and call it jazz band or something like that. So I select the first one, I hold down shift, select the last one. And then I right click and you would think that I might say add bus channel, but no, that's not what I want to do. That's if I want to just add a bus channel that I want to route other things to on another occasion. In this occasion, I want to add a bus for all of those selected tracks and boom, there it is. And can you see how the routing now has changed from main at the bottom here to bus one? So if you're not familiar with Studio One routing and in input and outputs, on each of your channels, it, at the top it has your inputs and underneath that it has your outputs. So I have now changed that from main to bus one. 
And if I name this, I'm going to color code it red like I normally do. But let's say I name this uh, band, not bass, band bus. Now, do you see now that I've renamed it, all of the outputs now say band bus, which means the whole band is controllable off one fader, like this. Which has its own uses uh, for doing fade outs or whatever. But ordinarily, what I would do is I would do compression and EQ and that kind of thing to whatever selected tracks I have routed to that bus, as you saw earlier. That is definitely one way to do it, and it's the easiest way to do it. There is another way, um, which has its own applications, and that would be if I wanted to send to bus to a bus instead of actually having the bus directly routed to it. And there are, there are times when doing a send to a bus is really handy. Let's say, for instance, parallel compression. I might want to have a parallel compression bus for my drums to really give them some punch and some clout. Well, you can do that with a send. So the, let's say I have all of these uh, routed back to that bus. Let me just set that up again. There we go. So everything is now back routed to that band bus. But let's say I want to send to another bus for parallel processing. So I click in this little open area here and do add bus channel. And let's call this one um, parallel, I can't spell today, parallel bus. Okay, now nothing is routed to it at all. So no audio is going to pass through this, and none of these tracks are sent to it. But let's say I decide I want to send my drums to it. Well, that's fine, because when I click the plus sign here, it shows up. And now I can send as much or as little to that bus as I want. So we're talking about parallel processing. So I would do parallel uh, processing with a compressor, and I would do some kind of crazy heavy compression on this channel and uh, it would be independent of this channel so I can continue to, to orientate the mix how I want and have all the balances how I want and all I'm doing is sending a copy um, before it hits this fader so I change that to a pre-fader send and over it goes into this channel here and that would be for parallel processing very very useful application of just adding just a bus channel um i don't do because of the style of music that i work in mostly i don't really have much of a need for parallel processing um so i don't tend to do it that way i tend to just bus this way that you've that i've shown you here okay so i hope that was helpful uh if it was then please hit the hit the like button um and if you think that other people, other friends that you know, or other mix engineers that you know would find this useful, then hit the share button, make sure they get to see it. Uh, and if you find any of my other videos on my YouTube channel really helpful, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And what that will mean is that every time I release a video, you will be the first to hear about it. And you can go and check that out. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you on the next one.